Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Zamzam. Uh, it's really nice to be here, and thanks for the organizer for uh, like making this event happen. Um, I'm uh, so uh, I. Uh, my name is Zamzam. I'm uh, from Iran, but I've been uh, working in Denmark for the past uh, four years. Uh, I have been doing iOS for the mm, from 2015. So it's been a couple of years that I've been doing iOS, but recently I've been doing other stuff now. Uh, I'm currently working as a tech lead in a company called uh, Vio Technologies. Um, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and I had the honor to be a part of the woman who code uh, 100 technologies to watch uh, this year. So I'm really honored about that. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, SwiftUI. So, before I do that, uh, you need to know a little bit background of how it started for me. Uh, so I joined uh, Vio um, almost two years ago, more than two years ago. And uh, when I joined the company, uh, I joined the company because I really liked what they were about. So Vio is about uh, democratizing uh, sports technology for everyone. Uh, so right now, only uh, professional clubs uh, and the clubs that have uh, biggest sponsors have access to technology. Uh, whereas what Vio is trying to do is that it's trying to uh, offer the, the services uh, with a reasonable price so that everyone can record their games and do analytics on their games. Uh, so that's the uh, vision of the, and this is the Vio camera. So you, uh, it's like, it, you might have seen it in uh, around the football pitches that people are using this to record uh, football games. So, when I got hired, uh, we, the, we were in the process of making the Vio Camera 2, which we're supposed to do live streaming, and it does do live streaming right now. Uh, so that you can um, just buy the camera, put it uh, on the pitch, and then it can uh, live stream. So what we wanted to do was that we wanted to make an application that you could see the live streams uh, in that application, so, which is called Vio Live App. Uh, so when I started the project, it was um, 2021. So SwiftUI was relatively new still. I haven't uh, worked with it myself, and um, I didn't have, like, I, I worked with it on a side project, but never, like, uh, on a real production project. And then I was like, uh, okay, it's either I'll do this now, or I might never get a chance to um, start something with SwiftUI. So I made the choice to go with SwiftUI. I remember at that point uh, we had an, uh, I had a colleague uh, on Android who also decided to use Jetpack Compose. So we decided to do this uh, at the same time. And um, flash forward to now, it's the app is out for um, almost a year and a half, and we have um, half a million users worldwide. The crash rate is 90, crash free rate is 99 percent and the rating is 4.7 um, with 14,000 ratings. So I think it kind of went well. Um, so let's talk about SwiftUI, but first we're gonna talk about cats. So who thinks cats are cute? <laughs> okay, we are in among cat lovers. Um, so this is relevant, I promise. Uh, who has never tried SwiftUI? Okay, okay, cool. Uh, who wants to try SwiftUI? Okay. <laughs> who has tried SwiftUI? Okay, everyone else. And <laughs> who works with SwiftUI on a daily basis? Okay, it's uh, a lot of you. So, okay, you can leave now. I don't have any. <laughs> so, let's talk about that. So, SwiftUI is, um, to me, it's like a, a box of chocolates. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, but you always, you can always count on it to be sweet or bitter or both. <laughs> so, what makes this uh, framework swipe worthy? Uh, the thing is, uh, it is, it has declarative syntax, uh, automatic layout. I'm going to talk about them in a short while. Faster development, no storyboard, shareable UI, and easy to learn. Okay, let's talk about this. So, declarative syntax. Uh, for those of you who work with it, you know that it's very different from uh, UIKit. So you tell it what you want it to do, and it basically does it for you. So you don't have to be very explicit in what you want your view to, to have. Um, so here I wanted to have a text view uh, that has a text field. Uh, so I basically say text field, that's it. And I want the context, the text to go into text field. 
So this is in Swift UI. And the same in UI kit is like this. So you have to be very explicit on text field, what is the size of it, uh, what is the delegate, what happens in the delegate, where would you put the data, where is the text, what is happening over here. So you have to be like very, uh, like very specific what, what you want to happen. Um, it has automatic layout. So uh, I hope that like now, uh, we don't have to run our code on 100 different devices to make sure it works with Swift UI. So it basically just uh, works um, with the few line of code. You have a Swift UI login view. You just uh, say, I want two text field and a button. And you can be like 99% sure that it will look okay in most of the devices. Uh, however, in UI Kit, you have to go through all of these uh, constraints and delegates and making sure that everything is in the right place and then setting up the delegates and data source and actions and uh, so a lot is going on. Uh, and the, the result is the same. Uh, so you can see how it could result in faster development. So when you are working with Swift UI, it's uh, most of the time it's really fast to make a, just make a page. Uh, anyone uh, can just uh, put some uh, components into a Swift, uh, Swift page, a Swift, uh, Swift file, and then you can have your, uh, like, like a version of your UI. And then you spend another two, three days just to make the uh, minor parts uh, work. So that's how it is usually with Swift UI. Um, so I have an um, uh, example here. So it's a list, and as you can see, it's just a, um, it's just a very normal list in Swift UI that you have an image and a text. And then what happens in UIKit is that you have to write all of these. So you have to have a table view and then a data source and then, then a table view cell and then um, like make sure all the constraints are right and make sure everything is happening in the right place, everything is uh, correct set. So there is a lot going on and you can see why it could take a while to make it work in UIKit. Um, Live preview. So live preview, when I started uh, a few years ago, it wasn't my favorite thing because it never worked. It always had this loading and like uh, not working. Now it's much, much better. Uh, so I really, really like it uh, today because um, it's uh, sometimes you just don't want to, it's not so fun to build a very large project and wait for it to run and get to the page you want to get. So when you use a live preview, you can just um, see what you're working on right there without having to compile and build the project. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this is just an example of live preview, just adding a button and then it'll show up over there. So, no storyboards. So who remembers this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so like uh, with uh, storyboards, uh, it always happened that you could never work on the same file. And a lot of people so cho chose to do it in the code. Whereas uh, the, I, 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 like unpopular opinion, I really like the storyboards. But the problem was that it could never work on it together. So it was always, okay, I'm working on this storyboard, you cannot touch this one. And then uh, otherwise, if you had to merge them, we would uh, usually just revert one of them or like ignore the changes and redo the changes again because we never, nobody wants to go through that conflict file. Shareable UI. So finally, in Swift UI, you can share UI between multiple platforms. Uh, so it's pretty nice that if you want to uh, make a, a side project or any project that you just want to work in multiple platforms, you can just write one line of code, like one set of line of codes, and then it will work on uh, all the platforms. Uh, so this is my uh, favorite ugly list. So it's just like a, with a few line of code, you have it running on all the um, iPhone, iPad, Mac, and watchOS as well. And it's uh, easy to learn. So. Could you hear me before? Do I need to uh, put it? <laughs> okay, I think it's fine. Uh, so easy to learn. Um, I, I, really, I really saw this firsthand. So I had a, a, a student worker joining uh, my team and uh, he did not have any experience with working with uh, iOS or uh, Swift or Objective-C for that matter. And then um, 
when he joined the uh, joined my team, he was also like a very bright uh, person. But the thing is that he could really get the hang of Swift UI very fast. So after a few weeks, he was able to contribute to the project and like understand what's going on. Uh, whereas uh, with UI Kid, I remember it was pretty like it was harder to get into, especially if you had to write the code. Just like getting the hang of all those constraints uh, took a lot more time. Uh, and Another thing which is pretty cool with Swift UI is that uh, Apple has this uh, interactive tutorial, so Apple Docs is pretty nice. I feel um, I'm not the only one to say that Apple, most of the time, is not my favorite source to go and learn something, uh, but here I feel it, they really did a good job with the, these tutorials. Okay, so it has all of these great features, but why would you not want to use it then? Why would you swipe left? So, hard to build complex UIs. Uh, Swift UI is growing old, and uh, incomplete feature set, uh, tricky behavior, limited backward compatibility, and uh, debugging is a hassle. So we'll get to this now. Uh, hard to build complex UIs. Um, so the thing is, I really tried to find a UI that I could say you cannot make this in Swift UI. So if anyone knows of uh, any UI that you cannot make it in Swift UI, please send it to me. But the thing is, usually you can make it happen, but it's just that it's not very easy to do it. And the thing is, when you're coming from UI Kit, you have a different way of thinking how you would make the UI, whereas in Swift UI, it's completely different. So you have to think different, and you have to like learn how to make UIs with Swift UI, but you can do it. It's just that it could take uh, more time for you, and it could really be annoying sometimes. Um, Swift UI is growing old. So what do I mean by that? Is uh, so every since the release of uh, Swift UI, every year uh, Apple releases a set of new uh, modifiers, a set of new features, and a set of new uh, uh, functionalities to Swift UI that you can only use from the latest iOS version. Which means that if you have to support older iOS version, you always have this dilemma of okay, what do I do now? Like how do I use these new things but also support older versions? Uh, so let's look at what's new in iOS, uh, in Swift UI in iOS 15, 16, and 17. Uh, so there is a list here. I'm not going to go through all of these features. You can Google those by yourself. But uh, you can see there is a lot here. And no, some of them are not that, like, there are very common things that you would want to use in Swift UI. But uh, you just can't if you're supporting iOS, uh, older iOS versions. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you are asking what is, so what, like, what's the, what's the big problem here? I, I'm gonna just quickly show it to you. So let's say you want to have a list that uh, doesn't have a separator. It's very common. Why would your list have a separator, right? And for some reason, uh, the first uh, Swift UI list thought that everyone wants to have a separator. Uh, so when you want to remove it, there is this uh, nice uh, modifier, uh, modifier that says list row separator hidden, right? Pretty nice, but it's in iOS 15. So if you want to support that in iOS 14, you get this that says, okay, it's not available. So what do I do now? Uh, so you end up doing something ugly like this. I know there are like bare ways and you can wrap it around and do all sort of things with it, but the, at the at the end, you're doing that. So on the top, you have the nice modifier. On the bottom, you have some code from Stack Overflow somewhere that says it could work. And then you put it in and say, OK, let's hope that it does. <laughs> so yeah, not so fun. And it does happen with all of those modifiers. So like the, the, the newer, uh, the, the, the older you support, you cannot use the newest uh, modifiers. Um, so I get, I think you got the picture moving on. Uh, incomplete feature set. So every year they're adding a lot of features. So now it's much more complete than it was a few years ago. Uh, but there's still, uh, there is this thing with navigation management. So I've heard this a lot of times that everyone asks, okay, what do we do with, man uh, with navigation? How do we make it work with Swift UI? And to be honest, uh, I also didn't use Swift UI navigation back in the days because I thought, okay, if everything goes wrong, I want to be able to just use UI Kit. So my navigation is in UI Kit, and then everything else is in Swift UI. I know they've improved it a lot, but I still uh, hear from other engineers that they have problems with the navigation. Uh, 
the other thing is, um, I think uh, everyone who has worked with uh, collection views in UIKit, uh, we used to love them. They were perfect, you could do a lot of things with them, uh, but you don't have the same thing in Swift UI. You have a lot of uh, lists and HS stack, uh, lazy HS stack and lazy VS stack and um, scroll view and all of that, but I think like it doesn't come to the same level as the collection view in UIKit. And at this time, there is no ability to add formatted text inside a text editor view, so I don't know why, but like it's not that like weird, but it could uh, you could really want this to have, and there are a lot of these tiny things that you don't have in SwiftUI. And then the case would be that you go to your designer and say, "Could you please, could we please not have this?" So, like you have that conversation with them. Uh, and then going moving forward is that complex gesture recognized. They added two uh, new gestures in iOS 17, but then again, you can only have those in iOS 17 and the previous uh, Swift UIs, they have a very limited uh, gesture recognizer features. Um, changing a status bar, you cannot do it uh, in Swift UI, so you can set the whole status bar to be one color, but if you want to change it per uh, view, it's not that easy. And if you want to support iOS 13 and 14, I would really ask you to think twice because then it becomes a really painful because like nothing, basically a lot of things do not exist in iOS 13 and 14 in SwiftUI. So for those of you who are working on an application that support older version, I don't really think this is a good choice. Um, and then there is new things in iOS 17, which is, uh, so they added two um, extensions to animations, which is pretty, pretty great. So one of them is the completion on the animation. So you can add an animation on the completion part. And the other one is the phase animation. So you can make animation like uh, after, happen after one another, which was really missing from SwiftUI. And then you have the observable, observable macro that I'm going to talk about. And then support for Swift data. So Swift data is the, like the core data support in Swift. So, and it's pretty nice when you work, have it in Swift UI, but you can only do this in iOS 17. Um, so tricky behavior. Uh, this is uh, what I spent a good few days trying to figure out. So I had a very basic timer, right? I, there is a timer that I want to uh, run every second, and um, in that I'm just plusing one to my uh, variable. And I'm showing that here in the, in the text. And then there, I have other like sub views in my uh, body as well. So I, there was something weird going on with my view and I saw that it was flickering and I couldn't figure out what was the issue. So I ended up adding that, which was really helpful. Uh, so what it does is uh, that it prints every time your view updates itself. And then what I saw was something like this. So every second, so depending on your timer, your whole view gets updated. And if you, and it's not a bug, it is how it's supposed to be, but if you don't know that, and then you have a lot of subviews inside your main body, then it becomes that all of your views just re-render and re-render based on your timer. So this is uh, one of the things that, uh, yeah, I really didn't like, <laughs> not knowing about it. I spent a few uh, days just trying to fix the issue. Uh, and then let's talk about a uh, published property. So I feel like everyone who uses SwiftUI, like you have a published property and then you use it in SwiftUI and then everything works perfectly. And uh, it does most of the time, but you just need to be very careful with published properties as well. So if you use them wrongly, then it could again re uh, result in re-rendering the view without you knowing it and then making your view being buggy or like something not working right. And the other thing is a state object versus uh, observed object. So who um, knows the difference between these two? Okay, not all of you. And I'm pretty sure the thing, uh, the, the people who know about it had a problem and they had to go and see, okay, why do, why do we have these two? What's the difference? Maybe this is my issue. So uh, the difference between these two is, so they're, they're pretty much the same. So you could just go on using them differently, not knowing what, they, what the difference is. But the problem is that they, it, there is a big difference between the two. So the state object uh, makes sure that there is only one instance of the object, whereas the observable object, uh, observed object does not 
manage that. So it doesn't care how many objects you have. Uh, and the other um, thing is, so you need to use the state object if it is within the view. So you have one and you just make it uh, like you instantiate it inside the view. Uh, whereas the observable object, uh, you observed object, you can pass it along into your sub view. So uh, it's like you can inject it into other views. So this is the very big difference between the two of them. And environment objects. So environment objects are pretty powerful uh, property wrappers for us because then you can uh, have a shared, uh, shared thing across your views and it works most of the time. But then again, there are some times that uh, if you include an uh, ob environment object in your Swift UI view, even if you don't use any of its properties, so you just include it and don't, you don't use any of its properties, it will still re-render your view without you knowing it. So be sure, like, make sure where, uh, use it only if you really need to use it. And let's talk about this part. So life as we know it right now is that you have a view model, you can call it whatever, and it's of type observable object. And then you have a published uh, property uh, that you can pass along to your Swift UI view. So here you have a, I have a state object uh, of, of that type, and then every time these, these properties changes, then you get the change there and vice versa. So this is how it is right now, but just uh, in this year, they announced this observable macro. Uh, so for those of you who haven't um, seen this before, it, uh, it, it basically changes the whole thing. So you don't need to use this. It will change to observable. And then you don't need to use published properties anymore. You can completely ignore that. And then uh, your Swift UI view doesn't have to have the state object. So everything I told you about state object and observed object and all of that, you actually don't need to know. I think Apple also thought people don't know these things, so let's just remove them. Uh, so you just have to use a state. And the thing is, you, don't, you can't even use it without the state. So even a simple var could just work for you the same way, and you don't need to have published properties. So this is really nice, but then again, the problem is uh, it's only available from iOS 17. So if you want to use this, you can only use it from iOS 17 forward. Um, so what are the things that are big changes that are coming from iOS 17 in SwiftUI is that there is no need for you to use combine anymore. You can just use observation uh, framework. So there is no more published and this sort of changes to being observable class. Uh, this is a Swift macro, so it does do a lot of magic behind the scenes for you to make this happen. Uh, but then you don't need to have the observable object anymore. Uh, and then you don't have a state object, observed object, and environment object. So you just have a state and bindable and environment or nothing at all. So the state unbindable is only if you have uh, this kind of uh, passing through that you want to, so if, if your view is a text, uh, text field and you need a binding, then it has to be bindable. Otherwise, it could just be a symbol var. Um, so we're, we're getting back to limited backward compatibility. So in a lot of cases, I would say if you're, um, uh, most of iOS users, they are very um, fast and up to date with the latest iOS versions. Uh, so if you can uh, and you want uh, to, so to have the new versions, you have to be willing to just not support the iOS, the old iOS versions. Because supporting the older versions you want to support, the more limited you become in your uh, programming. So another thing which is uh, very, like I myself had uh, my times and uh, not so much fun times with, was debugging the Swift UI view. So I, this is a very nice gift. I think it just uh, shows you what I mean. Uh, let's just watch that. It's just a few seconds. So 
I guess everyone, every one of us has that thing that you have your view almost finished, but there's just one thing missing, and then you spend like, so you do the whole thing in a day, and then you spend five more days just fixing those little things. Um, and then for me, these, uh, these two, so print changes and um, print, like these two really saved me, like a lot of times to make sure like what is happening, what is updating my view, and like what is going wrong here. So um, yeah, so it's not so fun. Um, so at the end, uh, can we trust? Can you trust Swift UI or uh, will it ghost you? The thing is, uh, Swift UI can be like a cat. I told you it's relevant. So cats are very cute, right? But the problem is they can also scratch your carpet and uh, you know a lot of things in your apartment. Uh, but at the end, you like they cuddle up and they have those cute eyes that you cannot uh, ignore. Uh, so. Um, Swift UI is built for the future, so you, no one can uh, deny that Swift UI is here to stay, like with also all these uh, changes that they announced in uh, the latest WWDC. Uh, it is going to be here, and Apple is really putting a lot of effort into making it uh, better and better each year. Uh, so it's not like, no, it's gonna go away. So it's gonna be here for, a few, for the, at least for a few more years. And then uh, once you had a taste of Swift UI, you can never go back. I really had this experience myself that when I first uh, uh, started the project, uh, there was this uh, complex view uh, that I got from our designer, and then I was like, okay, I mean, I'm just gonna make this with UI kit. And then uh, I started like adding collection views and table views inside collection views and cells and all of that and constraints, and, and I spent like uh, half a day and I was like, Okay, no, I, I don't. I don't want to do this anymore. So I just like moved back and started using, doing it with Swift UI. And I really, at the end, I really, it, it was really much, much, much better because we ended up changing that view a lot before releasing it. And it was so easy to just move around components, add different things, and like change things. And yeah, you, okay, you want it to be horizontal? I'll make it horizontal, no problem. So like that was uh, that was really nice. And for me, it's really like not so fun if I have to do something in UIKit right now because I know how easy it could be in Swift UI. Um, so making Swift UI work for you. So it's like the secret to a happy relationship. Uh, you need to uh, be willing to make compromises and always remember to bring snacks. That was it. So thank you, Zamzam, for the updates about Swiss UI. Do we have questions? Yes? Uh, one of the slides you mentioned uh, no more environment objects, but I, I didn't see one. In one of the slides, you mentioned no more environment object. Yeah. Uh, maybe I just missed why so that is. There is so the environment object is changed to a new uh, property called at environment. Uh, so it's much easier to use it, and there is a, so environment object had a little bit of a complex way that you could actually implement it. With this new environment, it just simplifies that. Uh, there is it, it still does the same thing, but um, it just the syntax and everything is much simpler. Okay, thanks. You mentioned about, uh, with the timer example, mm -hmm. uh, about the redrawing of the whole UI. Yeah. Is there any way, any workaround to skip some parts of the UI being redrawn if we have to have that timer? So yeah, so the, the, the way I solved it is that the part of the UI that has to have the timer has to be its own separate view with its own separate body. So that part, so you have to really make that uh, like a separate component, and then you make then it results in only that body because it makes the, the body of its view re-render. Uh, so if that view is separate, then it doesn't, and you use that as part of your bigger view, then it basically solves the issue. And a big round of applause for Zamzam. Thank you. Thank you.